So Asus have just had their official full reveal of the brand new RG Ally X. So let's break down the top 10 key takeaways from the event, including some fascinating design insights. Plus, let's also look at some early impressions from three of our favorite tech YouTubers who've been lucky enough to have had some hands-on time with the Ally X. So key takeaway one is the huge 1.5 update to Armory Crate, which overhauls the entire experience. As Asus saw how many of us were using awesome game launchers like this Play Night one that I did a tutorial on. So this update provides a much more cleaner and console-like experience, perhaps with new features too like fluid motion frames baked right into Command Center, and also the ability to share our button mappings too. Armory Crate 1.5 will be available just next month in July, including to us current ally owners too, thankfully. Key takeaway two is the most requested and main headline feature of the Ally X, which is an 80 watt hour battery. As Asus saw all the crazy mods Ally owners were doing, and they specifically mentioned about the weight distribution of the bigger battery, not making the Ally X feel that much heavier. At three is that the Ally X will have a one terabyte SSD storage, as Asus saw that most Ally owners were upgrading their internal SSD to one terabyte. So this new M.2 2280 format will make it easier to upgrade, whilst also this bigger one terabyte size will reduce the number of users who feel that they need to upgrade to more storage. At four is that they didn't choose 32 gigabytes of memory as it would have significantly increased the price. And 24 gigabytes allows for 16 gigabytes for the system and eight gigabytes for the GPU, which is the most common configuration in the PC gaming community, apparently. At five are two new accessories. In that a new official hard case that apparently was a big request from us ally owners will be available that will fit SD cards and even the charger. There'll also be a new 140 watt charging brick with three USB-C and one USB-A ports, which is in for those traveling a lot and only want one brick. Key takeaway six is the new chassis design, which means the handles are a little thicker and more rounded for extra comfort. There are no ports on the bottom, just like I predicted in the last vid, and Asus says that the device melts into our hands much more, especially if you have alien thumbs. <laughs> The triggers have more of a slant to help our fingers slide more into place, and the key Asus guy Whitson actually stating that he'd put this huge upgrade in comfort above even the bigger battery, storage, or RAM, which is interesting. At seven is the upgraded controls, with a more durable joystick module that finally has more precise aim, is more easily replaceable, and get this, is stiffer, tighter, and offers more resistance. Uh, hang on. Yes, Asus, thank you, finally. We've wanted this for such a long time. <laughs> Sorry about that. The D-pad has also had a significant upgrade too, as there is a much more distinct cross. We can feel which direction we're about to press much easier, and it now has a matte finish for a more premium feel, which is all very welcome news for us retro, fighting, and indie gamers. We've got a fascinating new detail in that the layout between the buttons and thumbsticks has been tweaked too. So the reworked angle of the upper row now has a much better reach to make it feel much more natural and less distance for our thumbs to travel. On the rear, the macro keys are smaller and more compact, as apparently a lot of us users were pressing them accidentally. Key takeaway 8 are the new ports which are all on the top with two USB Type-C ports in which one of these is Thunderbolt 4 compatible. And um, there was no mention of the newly repositioned SD card slot for some reason. Hmm. And again, another fascinating insight is that there was apparently a lot of conflicts and feedback from our ally community. And many of us wanting to retain the XG Mobile. Some said they wanted Oculink on the ally, but many more requesting a more open, widely adopted standard, hence inclusion of this Thunderbolt port. At 9 is the vent and the improved cooling system, with the bigger battery meaning that they had to make the fans 23% smaller, 50% thinner, but somehow this increased the airflow up to 24% more, and making the panel time up to 6 degrees Celsius cooler, which in turn makes the touchscreen cooler too. And finally at 10 is that the price was confirmed at 799, which the vast majority of us guessed correctly in a recent poll. It will start shipping on July 22nd, which is much earlier than many of us predicted, and you can pre-order yours right now. So let's have a look at some first impressions from three of our favorite tech YouTubers. All links are in the description and are highly worth checking out, including two that have seemingly had quite a bit of time with the Ally X. 
And let's start with the incredible Ross over at Retro Game Corps, who was hoping for a 750 price point, but now I know it's 800, it may just be a little too high. But he stated that the Ally X is a good improvement over the current Ally, and the RG Ally X could be a great option if it's your first Windows based gaming PC. For all of us who currently do own the current Ally, Russ talked about upgrading to the Ally X really does depend on how much the current issues, like the poorer battery life, lower 512GB storage, etc. do bother us. Also bearing in mind that the RG Ally 2, whenever that arrives, will be a proper substantial update. Next, let's look at Linus Tech Tips, who seemingly has had quite a bit of time with the Ally X, and he raved that it's so much better than the current Ally, with Asus seemingly fixing everything, such as being more comfortable, the battery, the ports, and also more memory at faster speeds. However, as amazing as this new RG Ally X model may be, in which Linus was particularly impressed with the internals of the handheld, he feels that he just cannot recommend it until Asus prove that they can be trustworthy again, in light of them failing to recognize the SD card slot issue being a hardware flaw, which should obviously result in a full recall, or at the very least, Asus proactively dealing with this. And finally, the legend that is Dave2D, who also had extra time with the Ally X, was a little bit miffed that accessories for the current Ally, like the popular kill switch case from dbrand, now don't fit. But overall, he felt like the Asus did give the Ally X a lot of little tweaks to make it better than the current Ally. Dave also addressed the RMA concerns that many of us do have with Asus, that the company confirming to him that the warranty will be extended to two years on the current Ally, which is great news. Although let's not forget that Asus did issue a statement way back on 23rd of April stating this, so we have known about this for a while. Dave also had a fascinating take that perhaps the company didn't properly factor into the pricing of the current Ally all the issues that have subsequently arisen, which may explain the higher 799 price point. I'd love to know what you think about all of this. Are you thinking of getting the RG Ally X or are you just going to wait for the Ally 2 perhaps next year? Also, do you agree with Linus that Asus will have to rebuild trust with customers before getting this? Or is this a complete non-issue for you? Let us know in the comments. And as a thank you for watching this far, I'd love to share this awesome quote. Avoiding people for peace is self-care. Wow, this is so true. There are so many family members, friends and work colleagues who really can add a lot of extra stress to our lives. And there may be times we just need to stay away from certain people to protect our mental health. So stay encouraged today, guys. Hey, hit like if you enjoyed this, subscribe if you love this. And if you want to know how to remote play your PS5 away from home, like I'm doing here at Five Guys, then check this out. I appreciate every single one of you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.